What's up creators? Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do a text glitch effect. If you're new to the channel, you gotta go subscribe right now because you will love the rest of my content, I promise. All right, so obviously this is all subjective and there are probably a million ways that you can glitch out a logo or some text. So I'm just gonna be making a simple glitch effect, but the most important thing that you take from this are the techniques and the effects used to create these. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first of all, starting off, the most important thing you need is to have sounds. You wanna have sounds for when you're actually putting it to your text. It just will make it 10, 20, 30 times better. If you just got a glitched out uh, logo or text, it's just gonna be simple and kinda just basic without sound. Sound is super important. So in here, right now in this project, I have my text glit, like my text, it says glitch. I have three sounds, TV static, I have feedback sound, and I have a neon uh, light flick layer. So, okay, cool. So first of all, you wanna have your logo or your text in a PNG file with no background. This looks like it's got a black background, but it's just text. So whatever I put it over, it will just be the text. So I'm gonna drag my text down here and stretch it out onto the project. Now, an important effect that you wanna drop onto your clip is wave warp. So let's type that in over in our effects panel, wave warp. Now you wanna drag that onto your, uh, text or your logo now as you can see it's already put some type of effect on there already so you just want to double click this go to effects controls now they have all different types of waves you can do this and make it go like that or you can do a square which kind of glitches it out with like a glitchy effect i love that um, they got like a circle thing going on. They got the noise, which is kind of like a distortion, which is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and rock out with the square. You're gonna wanna make your sound and have your sound first, just because that gives you an idea of how you wanna glitch your lo your logo or your text to the certain things going on in the sound. So let's put us, let's piece a sound piece together. Let's... That's cool right there, I'm gonna use that. So let's add this right here. Let's take this text out of the way real quick. Okay, cool. So that's the sound we have. Now let's bring this closer. I wanna go in close on it now. So it kind of gets crazy at the end, like a So you wanna kind of feel your sound out. So, okay, right here. Cool, I'm cutting on the sound so I know where I need the effects to be going crazy at. So. Okay, cool, so let's bring the text over here. Now that we have the wave warp on it, let me take this video, uh, the video clip out so it's white, there we go. Okay, cool, so I like, I kinda like, I don't really like the up and down, I'm just gonna make it go directional zero degrees, so it's side to side. Um, you know, here you have the height, so it shows how far it goes across or whatever. Um, the wave width is like how many lines is gonna be in it, so you can just do like one line, or you can do like a ton of lines in it, or whatever the case may be. Me personally, I'm just gonna go really simple. I'm gonna drop one, one or two. Let's do that. So boom, I like that. Oh no. Now I wanna make it go further away from each other like that. But I don't want it to start off at the beginning. I want it to start at this line. So I'm gonna cut here. I'm gonna take the effect off of here. So those two frames right there, I'm just gonna, so let me stop right here. You can change the opacity, you can add layers and make like a, a RGB split, you can do blur, use the wave warp. And the most important thing about this is keyframing it. So if you want it to go low opacity to high opacity or shake a little bit to a lot of bit craziness or jitter a lot or different things or, you gotta use keyframing. So I'm gonna show you all these techniques right here. So right here, these first two frames, I'm just gonna drop the size down. I'm gonna go 30 and I'm gonna do, uh, push this little stopwatch for a keyframe. Then the next frame I'm gonna do, let's say 72 and I'm gonna change the position. I need to do a stopwatch here and go back to the beginning and click this little guy right here. So I set the keyframe for that. So let's go back here and I'm gonna change the position to maybe up here in the corner. And then it's gonna come in here, back into where I cut right here with that wave warp. So click this and let's mess with the wave warp. 
So boom, you want to hit all the stopwatches just so you set a keyframe. So what is happening right here in this frame is boom, that's stuck. So you can go to the next frame and if you change it, then it'll go from the first frame the way it looked to the way the second one looks. So it'll actually move and shift. Okay, so boom, I'm gonna stretch it out some more. I'm gonna do just one line in there. Let's do this a little, change the wave speed. So the wave speed, you start it out slow and you can start it out to like, you can take it to like 90 or 100, whatever. Basically what that is gonna do is it's gonna make it go faster. And then let's go to the next frame. Now what I wanna do is I wanna cut this. I wanna highlight this and I wanna drag a duplicate over top of it. Now I wanna take the wave warp off of the one over top of it. I wanna drop the opacity down to 50. I'm gonna boost the size of it to 110 so it's a little bigger. I'm gonna bring the position, so no, no, I'm gonna bring the position of it up. And I'm gonna throw on a directional blur to this clip. I'm gonna go ahead and do like 10. And I'm gonna push the stopwatch. I'm gonna go to the next frame. I'm gonna boost up the blur effect on it. Let's see, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna move it down a little bit and maybe make it a little bigger. Boom, next frame. Now I'm gonna take that cut and get rid of that. I want that just to fly out of there. I'm gonna cut here again and I'm gonna take the wave warp off of it. And now I'm gonna do like a RGB effect all the way up until when the end of it is. And then at the end, I just want it to be simple and really small. So I'm gonna go to the end cut and get rid of that. Okay, cool. So this is right at the end of it. I'm just gonna be like, let's see. I'm gonna change the size of it to 50, push that stopwatch for a keyframe, go to the next frame, drop it down to maybe like 21, then go to the next frame. Also, let's go back to the beginning and set a keyframe for the positioning because I wanna change the positioning as well right here. So we set a keyframe at the beginning, then we come here and let's see, let's move it down a little bit, just offset it from the center and that's that. Just like simple. Okay, so let's go back. Now let's do our RGB split. So how you do an RGB split is you want to duplicate to three layers. So one, two, now we have three right there. Now you want to find arithmetic. Okay, cool. So you want to set this to max. You want your top layer to be 255 red value and the rest zero. You want to take this, copy that. Um, Effect. Drop it on the next clip. You want to reset your reds to zero and you want to do your blues to 255. Now you want to do the same thing for the bottom except you want to boost your greens and reset your reds. And now you should have this. So now what you want to do is you want to set the top two layers on screen blend mode. So come here, screen, now we have a pink effect, screen, now we have a white effect. Okay, so now if you just move your top red layer around, it'll give you a reddish bluish 3D type of effect. So let's go here, let's highlight this, and let's move it to the bottom. So you can see it's kind of like glitchy. I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the right a little bit with it and up a little bit on this frame. Now we're gonna boom hit that keyframe. Now we'll go to the next one. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. We'll go to the next one move it over here boom next one move it up a little bit boom do a little simple right there now i'm actually going to add a blur i'm gonna cut those i'm gonna add a directional blur onto this red one. Oh, i like that that's nice so boom 15 and this time I'm gonna go side to side with it. Actually, well, let's bring it down a little bit. 12. All right, so let's go to the next frame. Now let's move it around a little bit to the side. Boom, next frame, let's cut, cut, cut. All right, cool. I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna take the arithmetic off of that one, bring it back to white. I'm gonna add the wave warp back to it. Boom, now let's get some more crazy stuff going on. I'm gonna actually do noise this time. Let's do noise. 
Uh, let's go to zero. I want it to be side to side. Now this time I want it to be kind of like, let's see. Okay, cool. I wanted to do that. So boom, I'm going to set a negative 39 wave. Now I'm going to set all the keyframes at the beginning of the clip. One, two, over. And I'm going to change the speed to 100. And I'm going to change this to the opposite way. Well, next clip, I'm going to do this and make it like real choppy, not as many. All right here, I'm going to drop the speed back down a little bit. And I'm going to do it really choppy like that. Now, boom. Now, what we have. Wow, you see that? Now we have like a glitch, a shake, a static, all types of stuff. So, boom, let's add some. So where it goes uh, into this part right here, I'm gonna add some static in. So boom, let's grab some audio, bring it down. So boom. So basically what I just taught you guys is the, the most important thing to use when you wanna glitch something out in Premiere Pro, you wanna use the wave warp. That's really cool and it's really about messing with the settings and using your keyframes. Like I said, you can change your opacity, use your keyframes, you can use blur, directional blur is really cool. You can keyframe how it blurs in and out, like make it kinda of blurry, a lot of blurry, back to normal, then blurry again and back to normal. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with that. It's all about keyframing again. And the RGB splits are really cool for making glitchy effects as well. So those are just a bunch of cool effects effects that you can use to get that. If this video helped you and you learned something new, please, please, please smash that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and drop me a comment below. Let me know which part of this effect you like the most. Thanks for watching today and remember, keep it creative. Woo!